let's crack open the seltzers because today we're doing SNRIs. So in this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about duloxetine and venlafaxine. But before we jump into the differences between the medications, I want to introduce you to a new segment called Dosing Time. <laughs> All right, so I'll have to review the concept of sequential binding really quickly. So we know that SNRIs stand for serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. And that's because they block CERT, which is responsible for serotonin reuptake, and NET, which is responsible for norepinephrine reuptake. Now, a drug that has affinity for multiple receptors doesn't bind to all of them simultaneously. It will initially bind to the receptor that it has the greatest affinity for, and then will eventually move on to the next receptor. So it depends on how close the affinities are as to when it's going to move on to the next receptor. In another video, I used a fountain metaphor, which gives you a good visual of the receptor going from one tier to the next tier. So for SNRIs, we can think of a two-tiered fountain. So the first tier is it fills up CERT, which is the serotonin reuptake, and then it moves on to NET, which is the norepinephrine reuptake. So theoretically, if the binding affinities were super far apart, it would be just like how the fountain looks, where it goes from one tier, and then it maxes out, and then goes to the next tier. But that's not the case here. So since the binding affinities aren't super spaced apart, there's going to be spillover into the next tier before the prior tier is filled up. So the point here is that for SNRIs, you don't get equal serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake at all doses. It's going to be sequential, with level 1 being serotonin reuptake and level 2 being norepinephrine reuptake. And just a reminder, this stuff is not an exact science. There's wild disagreement on what the binding affinities are for the different receptors across different drugs. So it's impossible to think of it as like, this dose means this receptor. It just doesn't work that way. But that said, sequential binding is incredibly helpful for giving you a general idea of what's going on with these drugs. And it will help guide you in terms of how to use these drugs across different dosages and what to expect. So let's go into specifics for duloxetine and venlafaxine. So we know both these medications hit CERT and NET. But duloxetine, or Cymbalta, has a more balanced affinity for both the serotonin and norepinephrine transporters. I'm showing this by having the Effexor fountain be a little bit longer, which doesn't really make a ton of sense with the metaphor I'm using, but visually it helps. A more fitting analogy would be that Cymbalta has more flow from the first receptor to the second receptor before it gets filled, so I guess it would be like if it had more holes in the top tier, but I didn't really know how to show that. So let's continue. So for Effexor, we know that level 1 is maxed out at about 75 milligrams, and then level 2, which is net, doesn't really kick in until 150 milligrams. And this is consistent with what you see in Stahl's book. So he says that from 75 to 225 milligrams, it's predominantly serotonergic in some patients, and then 225 to 375 is dual serotonin and norepinephrine in most patients. And if you're like me, it's frustrating that it says, you know, some patients or most patients. It feels really vague, but the truth is no one knows what the fuck's going on. So the big takeaway is less than 75 milligrams, you're really just doing an SSRI. In order to get important norepinephrine reuptake, you really got to hit 225 to 375. So now I hope it's intuitive as to why effects or studies only show superior efficacy at doses above 150 milligrams, because that's when you're adding the net receptor. And now I hope it makes sense that the maximum recommended dose for moderately depressed patients is 225 milligrams per day. But one study referenced in the drug label found that severely depressed patients responded to an average dose of 350 milligrams per day. So to quote Stahls, non-responders at low doses should try high doses to be assured of the benefits of the dual SNRI action. Now, Stahl also continues to say that at very high doses, above 375 milligrams per day, dopamine reuptake blockade is also present. And to directly quote Stahls, up to 600 milligrams per day has been given for heroic cases. I think Tina Turner said it best. We don't need hero. So you can kind of see this stuff reflected in the dose response curve with venlafaxine. So you can see with Prozac where it's got a consistent slope and then it kind of peaks and kind of goes downhill from there. So with venlafaxine, you see less than 75 milligrams, it's got a slope, and then above that, it continues to improve, but at a slower rate. So now moving on to Cymbalta, or duloxetine, which we know has a more balanced affinity for the two receptors. So here, Stahl tells us that some studies suggest that serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake blockade are present at 40 to 60 milligrams. Again, nice and vague, but the big point is that with Cymbalta, you expect more spillover at the lower doses than you would for Effexor. One thing that's very surprising to me, and doesn't make a ton of sense, is that in neuropathic pain and fibromyalgia, doses above 60 milligrams per day have not been associated with an increase in efficacy. 
I wish I had something cute to tell you to make it make sense, but... I don't know. Nothing makes sense. I don't know. So Papa Stalls tells us that studies have not demonstrated increased efficacy beyond 60 milligrams per day for depression, but then continues to say that some patients may require up to or more than 120 milligrams per day. So I guess, again, the takeaway here is that for moderate depression, don't really get your hopes up above 60, but for the more severe depression, you know, maybe it's helpful. So what's the big takeaway from all this? There's too much variability across people to know what exactly is going to happen at what dosages and whether certain increases are going to make big effects. But what we do know is that if this medication is going to be better or different than SSRI, it's only going to be at doses above, for example, for effects are 150 milligrams. And anything before then, we're really just trying the SSRI classification. All right, I hope that was